I feel like this week has gone forever and it's been just like a roller coaster of emotions being in hospital last week, getting out and trying to function and run a business and be a mum and then trying to book in a million fucking medical appointments. I finally muster up the courage, uh, courage, courage to call the specialist I've been referred to for their colorectal surgery. Apparently he comes very highly regarded. So that's awesome. So I call through to the rooms and get in touch with Molly at the front desk. I won't tell you the name of the surgeon because I just don't think that's the right thing to do. And give her all my details, blah, 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 go through all the formality. And she's like, yes, the first appointment we've got for here is the 25th of Jan 2023, darling. And I was just like, right, all right, pop me in, doll. And um, I'm kind of shaking and nervous. I don't know why I get nervous when I'm speaking to medical professionals or, you know, their fucking pro kind of style receptionists because they're always really posh and weird and look like they shop in Claremont. I don't know what the deal is with that, but they, you know, got a weird vibe going on there. So we booked that one in and then realized how far away that actually is and it kind of hit me. That's a long fucking time to wait because that's just walking in the door. So you walk in the door and there's probably another year ahead of that. So it's two years on private waiting for treatment. That hits pretty fucking hard. I'll tell you that right now. You've got to wonder um, how many times we're going to do these little trips for hospital. Hopefully not more. I don't know. I'm actually kind of a bit scared actually, like how much more can go wrong. But I've been told the more I go into hospital, the better. The more time I spend in the hospital, the more they'll move me up the list. So it's like, you're fucked if you do and you're fucked if you don't, you know. And I don't really like going to hospital, to be honest with you. It's pretty shit because I miss my daughter, I miss my partner, I can't run my business. You know, my financial situation becomes more and more dire. It's an absolute nightmare. So today was good and bad and all that's in between. Um, and so... Besides that, just dealing with the actual physicality of this disease while well, being atta attached to your bowel and what it actually does to your gut is pretty gnarly. You go through these cycles of like intentionally not eating fuck all and or starving yourself so you're not in pain. It's not like I'm doing it to lose weight. I'm doing it so I can be pain free and function as a somewhat normal human being. And then you get so hungry that you just go, oh, fuck it, I'm going to eat something. And then you usually overeat because you're so hungry and then you get yourself into the shit quite literally, and then it just hurts. So it's like this nasty little cycle that goes round and round, right? And then you lose weight, you put a little back on, then you lose more, and it's just like... <sighs> it's a pretty gnarly little cycle that happens, and it is... I don't know, I'm going to have to pull myself out of it eventually. I don't know how I'm going to do it, eat smaller meals, or I don't know what. So I was laying on the couch feeling relatively sorry for myself, and had a nap. I can't make it through a day at the moment without having a nap. It's just not happening. My poor body's just so unhappy. Um, woke up and I was like, I really don't feel like going to fucking work. Like, I really don't feel like going into a gym and, like, acting like a fit, healthy person. Because I, it's the last thing I feel like doing. And I don't feel like a fit, healthy person. I feel like an old Grogan with a burning stomach. Like, that's the reality. But me being me, drag myself in there. And honestly, there's not one time I drag myself into that gym, put on a smile and pull myself out of my own shit and engage with these people that I actually adore so much and just kind of leave it all at the door. And I don't walk out of there. I have not walked out of that gym once without feeling amazing because what we're doing is, yes, we're strength training and we you know we're getting them fitter and we're getting stronger, but we're also engaging in just conversation about other people's day, what they feel, what they want. I mean, the conversation can be crass, it can be rude, it's, it can be ridiculous, but it's just such a mood enhancer being around these people. Of, and they're so diverse. There's such a diverse array of conversations. Some of it's highly inappropriate. Some of it's, sometimes it's boring. Sometimes it's hard to arouse conversation with these people because, you, again, you've got very diverse members in the class. But tonight was extra special. You know, everyone really had a lot to say about what how hard their day was and what's making their life hard and it you know it highlights that everyone's got hard shit that's going on and it highlights that we should actually be talking about it more with the people that we care for or in settings that we feel safe because you always walk away feeling better because you feel heard 
and when I'm in class, I make sure that people feel heard and respected and that they're safe. Whatever their opinion may be, whatever their political stance may be, it's not. I'm not there to judge and neither is anyone else. So I just finished my day feeling physically very tired, physically very unwell, not necessarily in pain, but just drained. But walking home just filled this sense of like community, which is such a lovely thing. You can't buy it. You can't, you can't package it. You can't, it's, it's not something that you can create from buying things or, you know, making yourself look a certain way. It's just you being you, being present, listening, open, caring, empathetic, compassionate. So I'm thankful for my job. I'm thankful for for my gym and I'm so thankful for the people that are in my life and that have just simple conversations with me and that are there and present. It's such a beautiful thing and it's something that I treasure dearly, very dearly and I feel incredibly lucky even when I do feel like shit that I still get the opportunity to walk out of my job and feel desolated. And at least I'm not crying in Centrelink like I was yesterday. Yes, I lost it in Centrelink. I will attach that link too. I was too scared to post it because I was actually really fucking upset. And poor John at Centrelink was a little bit too. Peace out.